Thanks for stopping by Big Top Gaming. My name is Brian. And I'm Ethan. And today we have a 75-point battle report. But before we get into this War Machine battle report, um, I wanted to say there's going to be a few change-ups on the channel right now. Uh, one of them is going to be that we're, winter is coming in Wisconsin. So with Ethan living so far away and making the trip out here each weekend to get games in, we are going to change our release schedule and do only one video a week. I know that we've been doing one Brawl Machine and one War Machine video or battle report each week, but uh, we just need to make sure that we can try and build up some of the, uh, the, the videos so that we can keep a consistent schedule because inevitably we're going to start seeing snow and uh, it makes the drive for Ethan a little bit more difficult to, uh, to make it out here. So that's one thing. The second is... We're getting a little fatigued on list building lately between the two of us. So uh, if you have any Brawl Machine or War Machine lists you'd like to see on the channel, leave them in the comments below and we'll try and rotate through some of those. I know like uh, we, we have basically every faction available to us and a lot of the cheese available as well outside of like some of the extremes. I don't own any Protectorate stuff unless you want me to play Warriors of the Old Faith, but for the most part, uh, that's kind of where we're at. Um, and then, so I, I know that the, the video shakeup is going to, or the release shakeup is going to mess some people up because we might have one week where it's only Brawl Machine or one week where it's only War Machine, but it's just for the overall health of our channel in making sure we can just stay consistent. So this week I'm back on more Convergence. I saw in the last video people were commenting about more Convergence action. So I just decided to drop my Orion list that I had paired with Lucant last week. Just because I really wanted to try out this list. I was really excited about Perforators. So again, I'm in Clockwork Legions. I got a free Corollary and then four Tessellators, which I think is really cute because it's the min battle group points of him. So I feel like it slots really well in the Clockwork. I got James and Prefect Hypatia as my other rec options, Double Void, uh, an ADO, a Frustrum Locus, and then two Max Unit of Perforators, and then, of course, again, Gas Before with a Scavenger just because applying Dark Shroud and everything is fun. And it's worth noting, we talked about it off camera, but we never really brought it up uh when we were talking during the game, I don't think, and somebody commented on it. Uh, in Clockwork Legions, Void Archons are not friendly factions, so they don't benefit from feats. Uh, they only become friendly faction in Strange Bedfellows. I really wish they were friendly faction for Orion's feet, because, man, that would make those sprays baller. For my list, I decided to bring Scorn this time, and this was a list that I talked about in our VTC celebration video. This was from one of the Sweden teams. I think it was, I, I want to say it was Electric Banana was the team name or something like that. And this is from Jacob Hjort. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I don't know whether it's Jacob Hjort or Jacob Hjort. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, pronunciation is is rough. But um, the, the list that I decided to take was a Disciples of Agony, Dominaire, Resheth list. And this one just has a, a Mammoth as the battle group, which I'm really excited to play. Uh, a Titan Cannoneer, a Basilisk Kraya, and an Agonizer. Both those beasts are requisitions for this one. Then we've got another huge base, base in the Siege Animantrix. And then uh, the rest of the list is really unique. It feels a little bit more like a Sorsha 1 list from the olden days. It's got two Paingiver Blood Runners. It's got uh, one Swamp Gobber River Raider, which, spoiler, I forgot to put on the table this game. Uh, two Void Archons, one Wastelander, two Paingiver Taskmasters, which is the other requisition for the list, and then a min unit of Beast Handlers. I think the gist with this list is to just use really good solos and good buffing for the minion pieces of it to let them do a lot of work, even though they already do a ton on their own anyways. And then just kind of having this, like, Ocean's 12 feel backed up by the, uh, uh, the, the huge bases, and then... Um, getting some sweet buffs with that pain giver taskmaster and having uh Risheth just like really dump on everyone's stats yeah, I... I won the roll and i instantly decided to go first because i didn't want the the derp turtle getting up the board and then i didn't want Risheth to be able to feed as aggressively and i figured if he went bottom of one it would give him the option of if he wanted to walk and cast spells or run because Tubby doesn't have a weapon, so he can't even charge with his speed four. Yeah, he's pretty slow all the time. And then I deployed pretty 
or not pretty symmetrical. The units and the voids are pretty symmetrical. Hypatia apparitioned, ran up behind the woods. I know he can arc and get something on her, but then again, like I'm giving him the option of wasting his, not wasting, but walking turn one. Because if you can kind of dictate if uh, Rashad has to walk compared to run turn one, it puts him in a weird spot. It makes it so I can't feet so aggressively deep. Yeah. Uh, feet, or not feet, Void and uh, Gatsby are running up. They're staying outside 20 of the Cannoneer. That's his walk snipe threat. Uh, just walking up. I, my plan is to maybe build a cloud wall off that forest. He took the Eyeless Sight objective. I took Treasure Chest. Uh, but his is all the way over there. That's why I deployed Gatsby on the opposite side. Uh, perforators on that side run up. The water and the... They're we, both water. Yeah, yeah, they're both water. That's why he gave me this side. I don't have Pathfinder on the units, uh, but Gatsby's flying. But the perforators, like having the maneuver through there cramps their style a little bit. Uh, and then I deployed all my Tesselators on the bottom because I figured I'd push really hard on that zone and leave Gatsby to try and fend up the top because I figured the Mammoth was not going into the top zone because of how the building is placed. So I figured Gatsby could kill a Cannoneer and like keep his scavenger in that zone and just try and like own up some stuff. Uh, the bottom void ran wide to try and stay outside trample and shoot threat. Or if I was happened to be in, how he'd have to go super far that way and then dictate where the turtle's gonna be. Like, and he ends up just being just out. Uh, Orion went, he put Avenging Force on himself. And I feel like that's the wrong name. It is Avenging Force. So if a warrior model is damaged in his command 10, uh, a model in his battle group can walk three inches and shoot. And he has a model in his battle group, and his gun is pretty awesome. Uh, so now I'm just doing test later running. I did allocate, I believe I did one to the corollary, one to a test later. I put up Avenging Force, and I put up a Spell Piercer just to get two tokens on the Frustrum Locust turn one. Just so that way like, it can start doing mage statics because that really is going to help against her chef's like pocket assassination runs on me. Uh, if I want to camp low and put out a couple magic bullets in there, I'm staying outside the 13 of apparate and charge threat with those guys. And then they're just basically making Fort Tessellator where I'm going to be inducting focus all around from all of them. The ADO will be like max five behind them. That way they can cycle it around back to the corollary every turn. And then the locust just kind of runs up. And James did pray the battle engine. So with me, I'm I understand that Ethan's got a mostly shooting centric force here, but uh, I still want to try and get some work out of the things that I can get work out of this turn. And on the top side, I'm just trying to figure out whether I want to get my blood runner. Uh, kind of moving forward into that zone but the void given where it's at can basically get it from anywhere unless i stay behind this building and with me having apparate uh it means that i can leave it there and let it get effective later in the game when ethan starts putting things into that top zone i don't have a whole lot up there to be able to uh uh, to put up there so it's mostly me just going to be sending things in to contest and not so much just sending in things to take it over and here I'm being fuddly with my tape measure and getting the 11 inches when I have sticks right next to me that could just do it um, and I'm like I think the tessellators aren't really super solid so I decided to uh, flirt with the idea of trampling up the siege animatrix and then uh taking some shots you know i was hoping maybe i could get a couple or at least hurt a couple and uh the the blood runner in the trench just apparated and the crea moves up and put up puts up its aura because i have uh my my goal or plan right now is to have the um the the animatrix trample up shoot and then repo back into the crea's uh animus and I know that Ethan's got Spell Piercer, but this way he has to cast it and it stops him from getting out a ton of magic bullets or whatever else Orion wants to do with his gun since he's quite uh, influential with it. So you'll see me fuddling around here a lot because Scorn isn't a faction that I play very often uh, and haven't played often in the in the past. They're definitely, a, I've had them at least in my like collection since Mark II, but uh, I think I maybe pulled them out twice. So like... Uh, a lot of the things that are going on with Scorn right now are all pretty new to me. 
So before I unpack this Siege Animantrix, I decide to take that low-hanging fruit of uh, Prefect Hypatia because she just is such a beat stick that I really want to get her out of here. And uh, I'll take a couple Sundering Spirits into her just to make sure I can get rid of one of Ethan's influential combat solos. So the uh, Taskmaster, after apparating out of the way and then deciding that this is what I want to do with myself, just runs into the forest to get within three inches of her, and we start zapping Hypatia with uh, Rashath after he walked up. Uh, now I think the way that I do these is I boost the hits and make to make sure they connect and then boost damage because I do want to get her out of there. And the first one, it only takes the one to get her out. And then my uh, my Blood Runner takes two damage from the Dark Rituals. So it's uh, good that he's still got some juice left in him to be able to arc again. And uh, I figure while I'm back here, I could just use the extra Fury to zap James while I'm at it. So we end up hitting her and then boost damage. And I think I need big numbers to take her off the table, but it just doesn't work out that way. And I think only do like three damage to her or something like that. Yeah, two. you did two. Yeah, At two dice three. minus five, and she's got eight boxes. Mm -hmm. and yeah. you rolled a seven. I was fishing for big numbers uh, because if I could get her too, then that would be really awesome for me. But unfortunately, she's going to sit there for a while. So Rasheth is just kind of chilling out and hanging around. Next up, I believe I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to move the... Uh, the uh, Beastmasters, and uh, they're just kind of all getting in a conga line to start whipping on the uh, um, the Animantrix, and I think uh, this is me just kind of like, fl again, flipping around. This is a super common unit for Scorn, but I just uh, need to get it to work right, so I get them all within two inches because the leader wasn't originally within two, just in case I miss one of these, and we whip the turtle three times to do the one damage to it, and that'll get me the three rage tokens, even though I'm being fuddly with it. I'm pretty sure that the Siege Animantrix is defense eight, so the three three ends up hitting. So we get our two dam or three damage in, and then the the turtle tramples up and starts taking his shots. He rolls up four shots for this one, so I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, I was hoping he'd only roll like a one or two. That's why I put the test leaders in threat. Just to try and bait out the trample shoot threat. It's really weird to like try and unpack this thing like that because sometimes with the D3, D3 plus one's nice, but it's not always going to get you exactly what you want with just rolling minimum shots. So I got a little risky here with it, but I also was still living in a world right now where like your, your shooting isn't super duper threatening to the turtle because I'm going to repo it back into the Kraya Animus. So we end up doing a decent amount of damage to the Tessellator. I think all day we hit with three of those shots and miss with that one that we just rolled now. Um, unfortunately, I take out every system but the left gun and, and, and induction. And, yep. Right arm and movement route. And with Tessellators, if you haven't played against these things, taking out one gun just isn't enough for them since they have reload uh, on each of them. So you'll have to, you definitely want to take out both of them. I mean, taking out one gun's cool, but I'd rather get both. And then uh, you can see like my plan for the Kraya Animus kind of backfired because I was like, wait a minute, I think I'm in walk shoot range of your Tessellators with Rasheth who's camping nothing right now. So I maybe didn't check that but I felt like I was, so I repoed the uh, Animantrix to block the block line of sight with the forest. And I know with the Tessellators, they probably just walk into the forest and see around it, but I figure there's some things that Ethan's going to have to do to make that work. They're only so, range 9, so like unless they have a straight-on line to Rishef, they're not getting there. Yeah, so I think I was thinking, for whatever reason, they were range 11 or 13. No, like, range 9. So that that's where the, the Animantrix just lives outside the Kraya Animus now. And that's also, it's also worth noting that Rasheth is out of it. So this is just me like not used to unpacking this army and getting it together. Next up, the uh, mammoth trundles forward. It's awesome eight inches and uh, doesn't get into the zone, but is still sitting there just to be influential. So I can start tearing things apart with it next turn. And then just voids and taskmasters run up too. So my turn to, he's ran all his beasts up. Uh, I'm, I think this is going to be my feet turn. Like in my head, like his beasts have fury. The mammoth is up there. I do not want that mammoth to start shooting with his star attack and doing a stupid AOE five, chucking all my dudes around. Yeah. That, that, that full battery shot really hurts your perforators. And the fact that he doesn't even have to hit my guys. Like if you run one of those solos or a beast handler in front of my dudes like if i try and space them out outside of each other 
then like, well, now the front line gets thrown into the back line and that unit's taken out of the game. But since I was able to go first, now I can leverage some threats. So since a model was damaged in my command, uh, Orion moves up, gets to shoot the battle engine. I opt, if you don't know, his gun, if you hit a model, uh, model and if you hit an enemy model, enemy models within two inches can be pushed away two inches or pushed closer. I opted not to push the only model that's close is the guy in the woods because I'm going to, my plan is to magic bullet and kill him. So I was like, there's no point in pushing around. So now I'm just measuring my Gatsby servitor run and engaged range and I'm just out. So I would have to flicker, but then if I flicker, I have to charge, but there's some shenanigans I can pull off with that. I'd hope to cloud wall, but now he's he's almost close enough where he would have to do the run trick. So, like I can maybe play defensively, but I figured next turn the mammoth is not going to either have fury on it or anything, and it's going to be hard for me to get out of that zone. So I'm gonna feat. I allocate nothing. I'm just planning out magic bullets. So I end up, I believe, magic bolting two of the Teslers, But here I'm still just measuring like my assault threats, uh, if I can snipe, if I can uh, do the empowered shots, which gives them plus two damage to their armor piercing. So Gatsby flickers, and now I'm just mathing out and confirming with Brian, if I flicker two inches forward, I can charge at the cannoneer that's tucked behind the building. I have flight so I can go over the building and there I have line of sight to him, but I don't have enough movement to get past the building. So I can't. So I have to stop at the building, and we're just like confirming like the reach line of where what line I'd have to follow. Because I'm hoping I can tuck around the other corner, but it's, it ends up where I have to be on this side of the building, if if that makes sense. Like I'm on the bottom side of the corner. Servitor that's now in run range is able to go, and then I just line up the other two. That way, the guy that's on the side can't apparate and kind of walk around and swing on Gatsby because he's he's camping three after Flicker. I haven't moved up the focus with him yet, uh, but that's where he lives. So now the Dark Shroud buff is on the Mammoth. Corollary goes and ducks three over. Now Orion's just measuring where he has to feed. I'm stupidly measuring 14. And I was like, wait, there's a reason why I take a corollary in every list, because now it's 16. <laughs> uh, so I stay where I am, feet, magic bullet, magic bullet, and then I opt to shoot the battle engine, and I boost damage, pow 13, does a couple. Camp in one, and now we're going to get the train rolling. So... If you don't know what Orion's feat is, it's against enemy models in his control. Let me read the exact wording. Friendly faction models gain an additional die on attack rolls against enemy models in his control range that have no focus or fury points. They gain an additional die on damage rolls against enemy models that have one or more focus or fury points. So I'll get an additional die to hit against the battle engine, and I'll get an additional die of damage on the uh, mammoth. So because of the water, I... I can't just walk forward. I have to do some cheeky assaults, and I have to do the snipe ability. I would like to be able to like assault and then do the empowered shots because the perforators are only range eight, range seven, so they have to snipe up to range eleven. So, just kind of going through here. First one hits, and then. Boosted damage or additional die damage does work. That one does work. Like these are like dice off two or something like that or three. Yep. So here's the. This was the third one. Now I'm doing the fourth one. Like I just rolled 14 twice in a row, and then, yep, we did miscount. Uh, we miscounted during the game. We thought all five had shots. So actually, there was one left. I rolled a 15, a 14, a 14, and like a 13. Yep, that was sad times for the Mammoth, and I'm pretty sure that that last one probably would have taken it off, but I think we we have a bunch of like fired or aim tokens, and we really should use those. Even when we're doing these small units like this, it's just easy to get lost and stuff, especially when you're blowing up damage rolls like crazy. Oh yeah, because if you don't know how the math was working on how four of them almost killed him while James does a Weapon Master charge into her prey. So they're POW 6. They have Predator Protocols against models with boxes. They get plus one to attack and damage roll, so they're POW 7. Uh, the Mammoth is armor 20, down to armor 10. 
Uh, but I have Dark Shroud, so now he's armor 8. He's armor 19 down to 20. 19. Or down to 10, sorry. Down to 10. So I'm dice minus 1 on 3 dice armor piercing. That's why I was doing just huge chunks of them. Uh, now, James did work. Did about, I want to say, another 10 boxes to the battle engine. First test later is going up shooting. Boost damage. Rolls like crap. Uh, left shot. Gets 3 dice to hit. Boost damage again. Because I'm just doing the math. And induct. Does a few. Reloads. Can't boost. Does nothing. Repos three. Into the zone. And then I think we missed the magic bullet killing the dude in those. Yeah, we probably missed one out. But I think the, the arc node had one box left. So we flung the shot to him and took him off. Yeah, because I rolled snakes, but it auto killed him because it was dice minus one. Yeah, mm-hmm. So I'm opting to boost two damage rolls instead of reloading for a fourth uh, dice minus eight shot. Because uh, I had to deploy the void wide because I was really worried about the derp turtle just trample shooting him off. Because if you can get Dark Shroud with these guys too, now they're pow 14s. Uh, that one reposed to out of charge threat of the void. Now this one walks up. And it's just like, tessellators are just so stupid good. Like you just take a pack of them. And they cycle around, and like between the four of them, I'm gonna get uh, all of their shots. So, uh, so I'm only getting three because they're reloading once and boosting. So that's three, three, three. Uh, so that's twelve boosted additional die to hit shots at rat seven, and then I get to boost uh, one, two each. So that's eight boosted damage shots. And they just rock it off the table. Yep, the tessellator package is really effective and efficient. Yep, because POW 10, like, their stats look like misleading because it's all range 9 POW 10, but then you take in, like, volume fire into effect and, like, reload, and they have two guns. It's just legit. So now the other unit is doing their snipe shot, and they're assaulting the mammoth just to get that final damage on. And then a dice minus one. Yeah, the first one just rips him off. So. This is uh, not looking good for Team Rasheth. Yeah, like, the feat does work. And now, like, the Tessellator package is able just to, like... I love perforators, and, like, I am super... I was really excited to play them, because I thought, like, in my head, like, it seems like feat turn with them is just bananas. And it does a lot of work. And then here we're just running around. I... We think the Cannoneer has Arcing Fire, so we're trying to position him there. I think we end up finding out he doesn't, and Brian's nice enough to let me move him around. Because I just want to plug the hole so he at least has to kill a guy to get to Orion. A uh, void is just respecting a walk shoot threat. Just kind of boogies over. The scavenger, you can't see. He ran to the far corner. He's out of Gatsby's control, but he's out of threat of everything. So I didn't respect Orion's feet or the perforators enough to uh, to 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 think to keep my huge bases around i thought they were going to stick around like they're pretty meaty and uh it just didn't work out so now i kind of am in this like really panicked uh get back into the game mode so the first thing i end up doing is apparate my one surviving blood runner up behind that building because i need to try and start positioning him to get into that zone to contest because if you're like king of the hill is like both the most dead and live scenario at the same time if you get put on the back foot you can see the game get closed out very quickly and if i don't start putting things into contest it's not going to go super well um previously with my huge bases around i was pretty much fine with uh um with uh the mammoth and the the siege engine or siege animatrix holding down those two bottom zone or the bottom zone in the middle zone but right now i've just gonna i've got to kind of figure out what to do here i think we we even had to scrap this turn too because we had a uh, um we had some issues with the void archons like i was teleporting off of kills from the convergence infantry and you can only get that teleport off of living infantry so i was yeah living or undead yeah so i wasn't able to to my original plan was to go into Orion and get him gone this turn because I figured I had enough juice to do it um, between the sprays and feet. So now we've got a. I think Rasheth. I'm pretty sure he's gone right. He's going right now, yep. and he's he's feeded because I need to try and get rid of stuff. Like I, I just can't have all this stuff hanging around here because the more. Like, Ethan's taken two huge pieces off of my. And no pun intended. Uh, off of my table. 
and uh, I'm still looking down the barrel of his entire army. So I do get to take out the one Tessellator that was really beat up. That's something. That's, you know, three or four less shots a turn. And you took out James. Yep, and James is gone now, too. Uh, so now my Void Archon's coming up, and they're trying to get the souls where they can, but his Void Archon is stopping me from taking a lot of these. But I really just want to try and get some of these Perforators gone and start affecting the middle of the table a little bit. Not to mention, I also need to start contesting the scenario so I don't just auto-lose on it. At least this way, Ethan has to work on it. Uh, you'll also notice that Ethan's clock is down quite a bit, so if I can finish this turn with more than 29 minutes, I'll be in a little bit of an okay spot here too. Just because, uh, what is it? you know, almost half of my army is gone points wise doesn't mean that I'm going to be like out right now. I'm going to try and do whatever I can to get back into this game and leverage what I can to win. And right now that feels like giving Ethan things to kill and making it difficult for him to do so uh, while still trying to take off pieces from him so he has less to do, do it with. Uh, I'm getting that blood runner to unpack up in the top zone now. There's two murder bots that I'm uh, flinging into, and uh, I really just like I'll be hitting them on not ones and then killing them on not triple ones. Yeah. So uh, the charge attack will auto kill, and then the other the uh, other ch attack from the thresher is going to get him anyways. So uh, I can sprint now, and I'm thinking about trying like, i'm not worried about the scavenger so much so i end up staying out of threat range for the scavenger that's in the invisible zone right now uh, because it's not within gatsby's control range so i feel like i can at least i put things up there that make it so ethan has to make some choices and decisions to try and get that blood runner out of there next up the void archon is uh thankfully in charge range of a tessellator and ends up connecting and uh doing not super awesome damage for the charge roll i think think we're just uh yeah we're not it's not rolling super hot here so then the second attack ends up connecting as well and i think about boosting damage and i'm like yeah i just need to get rid of this tessellator so uh because i was thinking about using it on the uh spray so that ends up taking out the tessellator which is really good for me that's another four shots off the table i don't have to worry about so now i'm trying to line up my spray to figure what can i get with uh the void archon and uh i thought about just throwing a shot into Ethan's Void Archon, but instead I end up uh, going into a Tessellator. I tried to angle the spray to go after the ADO and then get both Tessellators, but I can only get one because of the way those things are positioned. I end up connecting with one of the Tessellators, and then for damage, I think the the dice don't look super duper hot here. I mean, it, uh, I rolled I rolled an eleven, but it was still dice plus. Dice plus one Dice on plus your one. feet. You just so, you took out his movement. Both of his guns and induction order up. That's the that's the thing. That's why I thought it was like not a great roll. Was just because the uh, uh, not getting any of the um, important systems was not not good. Yeah, you did it to the five, and then it carried over, and so like you did it to the worst column. Yeah, those tessellators and negators are kind of hard to like really make worthless with the way that their attacks work. Uh, next up, I get the Wastelander to sit next to Resheth because this way I can at least get some defense against shooting there. And I put some uh, pain, pain Giver Beast Handlers into the zone just to give Ethan more to chew on. Now, my unfortunate problem with this Titan is I can't charge Gatsby and I can't walk around the building to engage him. So I just have to walk up and then pop a shot into this field of perforators and that's really the that it, it is unfortunate i would have liked to have been able to use the heavy to get rid of gatsby so i don't have to worry about him because that's a lot of combat output that i could rip off the table but uh just the positioning on the the titan cannoneer was just not good enough to where i could get that charge off on gatsby and even then there is not a 100 percent guarantee that i take it out being only fury three and needing one to charge and not having it been able to enrage him or anything like that yeah, and you had the like you were tucked behind the building, so you would have had the walk, and he's just not fast enough to get around the building. Yeah, I, if I was speed five, it would have been fine, but at speed four, he's just not making her. So uh, the cannoneers AOE four ends up connecting, and we catch a lot of guys in the blast damage. We end up blowing up two of the uh, two of the models, and uh, I think we we end, we end up blowing the initial target, and then one of the blast damage targets. I think. Yeah, because he boosted damage. And you just rolled really hot. Yep. And, and it's worth noting the cannoneers four, but I think you didn't want to go hot. Or did you think he's I still thought three? He, I thought he was still three. But that that's me living in a weird scorn world. Like in the beginning of this game, I one of the reasons why I trampled up the siege animatrix because I thought I could still use the rage tokens to boost shots. So like I'm not living in twenty twenty scorn world. <laughs> So 
going into my turn, I didn't really lose much. Gatsby's still alive. That's why I ran the scavenger so far, because I was worried about the scavenger getting sniped out. And I figured Gatsby would still be fine because he's Gatsby stats, and I figured nothing could really get to him uh, because he was tucked by that building. Uh, so Ryan moves up, shoots his gun, misses the void. So now I get to do my vengeance moves. Basically, my plan is here to move the guys up so that they can aim because I'm hoping my claim plan this t turn is either to break his back on attrition or actually score five because... Uh, the top zone only has one dude in it, and I think the Void can kill it. The bottom zone has two dudes in it, and I think in the objective, and I think between Magic Bullet and two Tessellators aiming on a Void, it's going to go down. And then the middle zone, even under Feet, I think Gatsby can do work to the, uh, the Cannoneer, and then Perforators with either Assault or Aiming, because I'd like them to aim to hit the Void. That way they aim to a... There's six predator protocol to rat seven and then aim to rat nine. So they just need fives to hit the void. Whereas if they assaulted in the gladiator, you mean? Well, I mean, the oh, I'm sorry. 14. They were both 14. So it's 14 yeah. engaged with the Titan and 14 space with the void. Because my plan is Gatsby goes first, applies Dark Shroud on the cannoneer. And then even if him engaged, he's def 14. So if I do the aim trick, I just need a five. So that way, I think with Dark Shroud, if Gatsby comes up short, because under feet, normally I'd say Gatsby can one round of Cannoneer, easy peasy. But now I'm dice off three effectively because of his feet, instead of dice off one. Uh, so Corlayer moves up, just gives the focus around. I did upkeep Avenging Force, just for future turns, but I think it would have been better just to drop Avenging Force and start camping, uh, because his outs are me. And my plan is to try and finish off the Void, or at least damage it with the perforators, have the uh, the Frustrum Locus uh, shoot, walk to the flag, boost the hit, try and rip the Archon off the table because he's rat 6, so he needs a boost 8, which is a little bit iffy, but if he connects at dice minus 5 boosted, I think I can rip it off if he's taken a couple points from the perforators. And then he can Magic Bullet kill one of the, the contesting uh, Beast Handlers, so like... <laughs> Right now, it's just a lot of positioning, and you can see me just thinking out everything and planning because, like, I'm low on clock, so I think it's worth... I'm not low. It's just... It's, You're behind quite a bit. It's top of three, and I'm down to 25 minutes because my turn two took so long. Yep. So I want to at least spend a few minutes to plan out everything, and then there you see I put Magic Bullet on the Frustrum Locus, and then I walked over to Magic Bullet the Tessellator, and then I'm boosting a shot into the uh, void. Because I'm just debating. I figured the... I hit. And then I opt to boost damage at dice minus four. And I do six, I want to say. Yeah, so, six. So I'm camping naked. And this is where the Avenging Force focus uh, would have been way more useful. <laughs> so now there, aim. So with rat seven... Because I'm always doing the plus two rat variable, and they aim to rat nine. They just need sixes, or they aim to rat. Oh, they're okay. So rat seven base, aim to nine, volume fire to 12, 11, So they just need not snakes. Yep, they're really efficient little fishes. Yep. So he was able to, and I forgot to use the magic bullet. So this was a waste of two focus. Uh, He's able to rip the void off, kill the other dude aiming at rat seven or rat eleven. And so now I have a full focus tessellator, a void spray that can get on the objective. So that one goes, aims, hits, inducts, boost damage, cranks it, does 10, boost, does nothing, reload, does one. So now it's sitting on, I want to say, four boxes. Yep, four boxes, yeah. <clears throat> so now the void has to go. He got the soul from the dead dude in the zone. Uh, so and then he uses that the boost, and then he kills the objective. So right now you've got two points locked down. Yep, because I killed the objective, scoring that bottom zone, and now the void boosts the hit as charge, kills the top zone, so now I've secured three points automatically. So I just need to get the locust on the flag and clear the zone, and then I win. So the Void teleports over, lines up the spray so he can clip a Beast Handler, the Cannoneer, and the Archon. I only boost on the Archon. I hit the Cannoneer, I hit the Beast Handler, and I miss the Archon. 
So I just boost damage on the cannoneer. Uh, does a couple points. Yeah, not nothing too impactful there. Yeah. And then just auto kills him, gives the soul to the void. So now I'm in my head, like, like thinking maybe Gatsby can finish this off. So now I'm just measuring perforator aims. So now, yep, Gatsby moves up. Yep. The murder bot, I accidentally roll three dice because I'm so used to murderous. Uh, so I reroll it for the two auto points. Gatsby goes, hits, dice minus three. Does two. Buys an attack. Hits. Dice minus three. Does five. Just going through. There. Does another four. So he's rolling kind of average. Does another four. Misses. Does five. So he's left on seven boxes and I missed an attack. So like I'd hope to get more shots into the void. Uh, but I think the perforators, as long as they can connect... So now the bottom unit, I can only really get one into the woods for like a Hail Mary shot on the void. But So he goes for the cannoneer because I'm hoping he can finish it off. That way the other unit can put more aim shots into the Archon. Hits it. So now we're just doing the math. He's armor 19, armor piercing down to 10, dark shred down to 8. So I did the empower shot, so I'm dice plus 1 and leave him on 2. So that was unfortunate. I'd really hoped he could finish off the cannoneer. Yeah. So the back one, I'm knocking shit over. Yeah, those Thamorite Archons just are not. Oh, they're they, they're pretty vertical. We never said. Challenged. Yeah, we vo we were proxying the Thamorites as the voids because Brian was using his too. Yep, and then we had to proxy out uh, Orion because I didn't want to dig for him. Yep. Uh, so the back one aims, kills the cannoneer because he's dice plus one with empowered shot. The next one that's in front, aimed on the Archon, hits. He's armor 17, down to armor 8. I'm a POW 9. Yep, so you crack him for some good damage there. Yep, now so the Frustrum Locust has like just a little bit less to do. Yep. So Locust walks. Boost the hit. Hits. I resolve the magic bullet. Kills him. Boost damage. Dice minus 5. And... Leaves me on 1. Yep. So that's unfortunate. So... I got nothing left in the tank, so so I either go to three or four. I think you go to four this turn. Because we weren't sure if the Archon was within four, and I thought it was... No, I don't think so. Yeah. So I got to live by the skin of my teeth on that one. It was nice to see one of my models barely survive instead of go off in one shooting phase. So uh, with this, uh, Synthurion's naked and... Orion. Oh, sorry, Orion. Synthurion is the model that's sitting there. Um, Orion's naked on focus, and there's a lot of uh, open space for me to be able to get to him through here since the Tessellators were being more defensive or more cautious on their approach instead of being a little bit more in my face. So with Resheth, uh, he's going to be the one to try and do things, and I'm just taking, like, I've got 32 minutes. I've got 22 minutes up on Ethan, so I've got plenty of time to sit here and figure out what's going to work best math-wise. I know that uh, I should be able to get some Sundering Spirits on uh, Orion, and then I'm also thinking about getting a Blood Mark on him potentially just because there's uh, the extra two damage from... Uh, from the Sunder Spirits, if I can feel dicey and hit you without needing to boost, are going to do decent work. Plus, I've got the Void Archon that can get a spray onto you. So, uh, with all that, I decide that I'm going to go for a uh, Blood Mark, one Sunder Spirit, and then another Sunder Spirit that is uh, boosted for damage. That's my goal here. And uh, when I look at things, I was thinking at first that I could just walk up or chef and get things into range, and I'm like, nope, I'm too slow for that. So I have two uh, beast handlers that can get within range. One of them's within range for the uh, blood mark, and one's within range for the Sunderer spirit. The thing that's a problem, though, is this Taskmaster, since he's been kind of butt-humping the... Uh, uh, the Void Archon all game, I don't have the ability to get him close enough to uh, get a Sunder Spirit into uh, into Orion. So I check to see if I can maybe get him through the forest because he doesn't have Pathfinder, and I just can't. So unfortunately, I'm kind of on this plan now where instead of getting Blood Mark out to kind of set myself up for this assassination, I've got to go for two fully boosted um, 
Sunder Spirits because I only have the two Arc Node targets there. And unfortunately, the Korea isn't going to help me, and neither is the Wastelander because he's a minion, not a Scorn model. So the first Sunder Spirit hits, and then I get the gut-wrenching pull of triple ones. Uh, so I just move on to the next one, and this one does about six damage, I think. Uh, you do four, and you leave him on 11, I want to say. So now I've just got to get this Void to do a lot of work, and we end up going through the math, you and even if I roll six. triple six. sixes on the Void Archon, I do not kill Orion. So I really wanted that, that second... Uh, um, Sunder Spirit to actually, or that first Sunder Spirit to actually do damage. I think if I do that, I could probably get out of this game and just kill Orion and be like, ha, take that. Um, but that didn't happen here, so unfortunately the game goes to Ethan. I actually yeah. I think I fucked up the math. Because I didn't, I forgot he could boost. I was on 11 oh, boxes. Gotcha. See, that's what I was, I was sitting there, I was like, with the with the damage roll, with the because I've got tons of souls on me from my pain givers, because, uh, Void Archons don't stop each other from taking souls. They'll they stop. Do. No, they'll stop you from taking. You. They'll stop me from taking your souls, but will not stop you, me, from taking my souls. So when my uh, pain giver beast handlers go down, I was stacking up on souls that turn. So I had the boost to go in for the fully boosted spray. Yeah, because when I he left me on eleven, it's dice minus two, and that's why I told him like, oh, if you roll box cards, you leave me on one. Yep, and that, that's where I was like, oh, okay. I mean, do you want to roll 3d6 no, right don't. now and see if you kill the, me? I kind of want to let you. The world will never know. I want to know because now I feel bad because like, I literally did. The, I was doing the math. I'm like, wait, I'm on 11. You spray me with a pal 14, dice minus two, boxcars, I'm on one. Fine, we'll go with roll three dice. So here we go, the infamous spray from downtown onto Orion. So I'm going to boost the hit. He yeah. will connect. Yep. Boosted 12 to kill. And we gotta boost boost our damage here. Let's see if we can get some Therian, or Orion, Ryan. sorry. I need a 12. Get off my table, Synthurion, or Orion. Fuck you. <laughs> so I actually needed a 13 to kill Orion here, so the next few minutes are gonna sound really weird. Uh, I think we were both just real excited, and then I had hit the, I said I needed a 12 to kill, so uh, the win on this one goes to Ethan, but uh, it was still a fun little thing to throw some dice with the camera rolling. So we got some live action, big top gaming, out of focus, crappy rolls. But that was a first for the channel. Yeah, I know we got our we got our first, uh, not just first live video, but also our first uh, not takesies backsies. It was more of like a let's let's finish the game, and. Uh, uh, we ended up getting exactly what we needed to get Orion off the table. So uh, I fake one, kind no, of one. one. I real one, but it felt real fake. So like, even though I didn't respect anything from Orion's army, I was still able to get the win on that one. I think if you if you would have camped the one focus from that upkeep though, like I sure don't win. So like, it it doesn't feel like a a, a win to me, even though. Uh, I mean, I made mistakes, and that's how you win games. The I made three mistakes that last turn. Not camping one, not not dropping a Vengeance Force, putting an extra Mage Bolt out there, and the biggest egregious thing, I didn't Mage Static myself with the Locust because that's what I planned to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I looked at the Locust, I never moved tokens from... Sin the reason why Ryan, Ryan cast spells was, this, was to get him back up to full on tokens. Yep. And then I didn't move them over there. Yeah, so I were. only had the two I needed to boost the hit and boost damage. Otherwise, I would have had the third to mage static, and then I don't die. Yep, and those those magic bullets, uh, one of the, the tessellator magic bullet, we didn't utilize it, and you didn't need it. But um, yep, so it was I should have been anyways. camping three more, and with mage static on me. So like, that's how you lose games. Like I knew. I was like, my only risk of losing was to die, but I thought I could clear the zones pretty well. It's just leaving a void on one box. It's just, it just happens. Yeah. Overall, I really think the Resheth list is super fun. Like I, I, even just the threat of the mammoth, I guess, guess was still really cool. Like I, uh, I definitely look forward to trying this list a little bit more in the future. I think it's really unique and, uh, um, just as a, it brings back like those feel goods of the old Sorsha days where you just run a bunch of really good solos, even though like there's a lot of turd polishers walking around kind of making the solos better. But the, the big thing is like the, we didn't get to see it unpack here so much, but the taskmasters can take up the, uh, 
the Void Archons and the Wastelander plus two strength. Uh, and then Resheth with Feet and Bloodmark can essentially give them a plus sink plus six strength swing and those do a lot of work especially when you're looking at a decap model that's uh that's doing a ton of damage yep an eight with uh dark shroud yeah with dark shroud on top of that so there's just it's like it's the even though we all know that resheth is the crixiest of the scorn casters maybe maybe there might be a, a little bit of argument there but um he definitely can swing damage a lot in a lot of ways that people wouldn't expect i think yeah and it's Perseth is just really good yeah, he's always got a game. There's always something for him out there. Yep, and I had the tools. Like, I feel like this matchup, we just brought lists, like, so we just kind of dropped them. Whereas, like, I don't know, was this like six? Without like factoring in who goes first, I feel like I have the tools for your list because of spell piercer, my feet into your war beasts. So maybe it's like, would you say it's like a sixty forty? I would almost want to say that you've got like a 70 30 on this one. Just I, if, if, and I, if, and I had to really like nail it down because that Frustrum Locus, if you play it like within Synthirian, uh, you can always whittle my stuff off and I really can't get my late game outs on you. Yep. See, I was thinking 70 30 if I go first because if you go first, yeah, then it's now different. this game's drastically different because now I'm on the back foot and mm-hmm. I have to try and stop a just star attack, stupid. Full battery I, shot. I hate that stupid yeah. shot. <laughs> the mammoth is the mammoth makes turn one for me really good and not so great for you because you have to get your perforators up to get into threat of my stuff. And uh, if you do that, there's a good chance you're just going to get launched off the table and knocked down for the whole game with those. Yep, because you'll just run a dude, catch the front two, they'll slam, get thrown into the back two, and then like there's a whole unit taken out of the game. Yep. But like I really, really enjoyed perforators because the whole game stick here was like, on paper, yeah, they're pow six armor piercings. Like, that's good and that's cool. But then like predator protocols against anything with boxes gets them to effectively pow seven. They can empower shot to pow nine armor piercing. And then like if that's not good enough, you can be pow nine blessed armor piercing to ignore buffs and dark shroud on top of it. That's why I was dice plus on a huge basis like yeah it's nasty if the void could have played more central too, like to get dark shroud on the uh siege animatrix that would have helped just as much too it's just like all the infantry can do work and i really enjoy them like i've wanted to try them out with orion and with mom because mom just gets them up to a pow 13 effectively with her harm bot every turn yeah or pow 11 it's and just another shroud. another layer of buff yeah but Orion just makes them so accurate on feet turn or mm-hmm. so like damage, like they're just dual purpose. Yep. It's a really, a really scary list. And I think it'll be interesting to, I know like some of the things I've seen people play with Orion are the ricochet robots and stuff like that. Yep. The monitors, um, but the, this, this list felt like it was very like pointed at a purpose and it was delete your stuff. The tessellator package is just so good. I know there's an Orion 10 tessellator list floating around because it's just that good. Like they just induct all along your feet and they'll either get 40 additional die to hit damage roll shots or 40 additional die damage roll shots. Yeah, and they then just one do of a lot them, of work. They'll have one boosted either way with all the... Because you take your two initials, you reload twice, you have one boost in there. Mm-hmm. And then like you just induct it along and along and along and along, and it's just like with zero input from your caster. Yeah, thinking about... I've been thinking about a lot about Strange Bedfellows lately with Aurora 2 because I think she's just a really cool model and want to try her out. And my original battle group is sitting at double negators, or not double negators, quadruple negators. And then uh, part of me is thinking that um, I should kick her over to quadruple tessellators, only because uh, with the induction chains on negators, things get a little bit weird because they do a lot of damage, right? But there's a good chance that they're opt, they're apt to overkill their target. And if they do that, then their induction chain stop chain stops, and then you can't get it to the other like double group of uh, negators that easily. So tessellators though don't have that issue because they can just sit there and peel apart targets from this wide nine inch threat. And Aurora's feet does count for their ranged attacks. Yep, because they are flying. So uh, that means that they're doing they're not doing as much damage as like a 
a negator would, but in some cases, it's probably better that they don't do as much damage because, like I said, those negators, if you send them off in pairs and you're not sending them off in the perfect way, you're not going to be able to get those induction chains to work exactly right. And then, again, if you overkill your target, you just have two negators sitting there that just ate three focus to do nothing. And it's possible for negators, like, they're speed seven. They can charge out of the, even the extra induction range from the ADO. Yep. And like you, like you said, you can't, as long as you space properly, you can't get out of the test later because I'm pretty sure... Like, if you spend your boost on the first shot, so, like, if you need to boost attack or damage roll, you just literally reload, miss, and then you keep the induction chain going. Like, there is zero risk unless you walk out of induction range yep, before they're, shooting. They're highly efficient, and I feel like that makes me want to... Like, at first, I was thinking maybe I should get more negators than just four, but I think, like, I'm pretty good with four negators and might start going a little bit heavier on those tessellators because the only way, the only place I would see the negators really, like, winning out on tessellators is, like, with uh, um, Axis. I think Axis could do some cool stuff with the negators, but, again, it's still overkilling and, and watching them go through their weapon master attacks, like, but if they... On feet turn especially, so... It's interesting. The tessellators are just so good, whereas the negators are a little bit more finicky, apt to dice failures, and uh, they just don't have the influence that the tessellators do. Yep. Did I ever show you the axis list I made, the pair with Orion 10 tessellators? I showed the, uh, a different group chat. I don't know if I showed you. I don't think so, but... Um I was thinking about a list of him myself, and I know the Galvanizer used to be a big thing with him, but now it's like I don't know if I need them with him. No, you don't, because my list, I think I, t I titled it Fuck You, because like, that's what it feels like to put it on the table. I think it was 15 Negators and Gatsby with a Negator, so it's just like, what do you do? Yeah, it's they're, just... They're, they're all they're, flying, countercharge, amputate, crit, amputate, flanks. Like It's like playing Infernal Tormentors just with more of them and then even with uh with uh feet turn with axis your opponent very likely won't be able to answer it and then you with, just have a wall of flying dudes in front of gatsby yeah it sounds like a really it, it's stupid really but that's also experience. like a 500 hundred dollar list yeah because the lights are 25 bucks a pop yeah fa dual kits fau is dumb 